So I decided to make a graphics engine again because I did that like five months ago and it was fun. Okay, so last time I used this thing called DirectX, which was a framework for my engine. It basically provided me with the base for my project. Think of me as a builder construction person. This is basically my hammer. Without it, I'd be sat here for months punching nails into wood myself. What was I thinking using this analogy? Anyways, this time I will still use a framework, but not DirectX, since I used that last time. So instead, I will use OpenGL, which apparently is faster, which is kind of cool. Okay, so I first made a window open up after you press this button. It's obviously empty because currently our draw function does nothing. Like, literally, it's empty. <laughs> so to fix that, let's get started with rendering. Okay, this should be pretty simple because surely I can just copy and paste my old DirectX code and change it a bit. That will work, right? Oh, and it did. Well, that's a lie. It actually didn't. But here's how I made it work. So rendering in any graphics framework is pretty straightforward. First, we need to create a communication channel between the GPU. Now, OpenGL has some functions that do this for us. And don't make me explain how they work because I actually have no clue. Then we basically need to generate some 3D data, send that data over, and our shaders will be able to process it and draw it onto the screen. So this 3D data that we need to send is actually just an array of vertices and indices. You see, any 3D shape will have these points. These are indices. And then these lines are vertices. We can convert this into coordinates, let's say, and then just send that over. But to be perfectly honest, calculating every coordinate is really inefficient, and I don't want to sit here trying to work out every index and vertex of this piranha plant. So instead, let's write an object loader, which will automatically do that for me. Okay, so I downloaded Mr. Snorkel here from Models Resource, and converted him into an OBJ file in Blender. And I had to shrink him because he decided to be 10 times bigger than he needed to be. I then imported our beloved dolphin in using this command. So uh, yeah, he is currently just a single color, which is a bit cursed. Um, and that's because we aren't actually applying any textures at the moment, which means we need to create a texture loader. Okay, so let's quickly do this. Let's now select the correct texture and bam, Mr. Snorkel is still cursed, but slightly less. Here is how the texture loader works in a very basic way. We pass in the path to our texture and its width and height. We can then open the file with this line and check if it's good. Just in case our file is corrupt or in the wrong format, we don't want to continue. We then need to work out the total amount of data in the file, aka its size. I do this by starting at the end of the file, grabbing the relative position of it, and that way I know how large the file is. I then go back to the start of the file and read it line by line. We can then create a texture using this stuff here and pass in all of our information, resulting in us getting a texture loaded in. This can then be loaded directly onto the model. So I thought we could go back to some basics and set up 2D rendering too. Now this should be easier than 3D rendering because OpenGL will do all the heavy lifting for us. So I started by changing my projection to orthographic. This is just the camera setup needed for 2D rendering. I was able to then use my texture loading system to load some images. I then found some awesome images to load up and drew them onto the screen using the text chord function, where I need to render each vertex corner of the image. So let's take a look if it works. <laughs> okay, okay, sick, yeah, it works. Okay, so everybody knows that any graphics engine requires some awesome, beautiful lighting. So let's get that implemented into this engine. To start, I created a new struct that will have our three lighting parameters, ambient, diffuse, and specular. We can then define a position for our light to sit in and fill up those ambient, diffuse, and specular vectors I mentioned earlier. Now, for lighting to really work, we will also need materials. So I created another struct with four parameters this time, ambient, diffuse, specular, and shininess. And I also filled those parameters up. And then I use these OpenGL functions to apply that material data to our objects. Then we just need to enable lighting and pass in our data we made earlier. And it looks the same. <laughs> okay, but actually it looks the same because I made a very basic lighting setup, but with a little bit of tweaking, we can have this. Ooh. 
Next up, I went and created a bunch of different shaders and materials. Starting off, I created this Fresnel Glow Slash Emission Shader. Now, it's not actually a Fresnel Emission Shader, since those don't exist in OpenGL. At least, I don't think they do. Instead, it's a custom shader that calculates the view direction, it then calculates the surface normal, and then we can get the dot product of those two vectors. And as a result, we get something like this. Overall, you can change the color, and it creates some really cool combinations. I then also recreated a metal material, which is mainly just the shininess parameter being cranked up. I also created a simpler emission shader, which just produces a glow-like effect. And then one of my favorite ones is this noise slash distortion shader. Here I grabbed a noise map and applied it to the material. We can then blend that noise map with a color and have the size of the noise map gradually change, making this final result. So recently I have been told to touch some grass, but instead of going outside, I will just create my own. So to start, I created a basic plane, to which I added a grass texture, which I found here on Open Game Art. So I created this model and generated it as a particle system. That way I can create a bunch of models really easily, and I can also randomize their place within a given range. And in this case, these model particles have no velocity, so they stand still and do what I need them to do. This was the result. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's really bad, there's no words for it. So I went back and found some different grass models here on Turbo Squid, and created different particle systems to make more variety. I also went through and changed the color, and then randomized the size and rotation, which created this. Honestly, much better, and it will do. And then to make it slightly nicer, I added some tree models, which I also found on Turbo Squid. So now I can officially say I touched grass. Next up, I wanted to show off a few other features I created. First up is text rendering. As you may have realized, I have been rendering text this entire video, and here is how I did it. I used OpenGL's built-in text renderer because it just works and it's easy. With this, I can supply some text, a font, position, and color, and then say whatever I want, even the entire NATO declaration. I also created a scene system. This meant that I was able to separate all the different things I wanted to render slash do. So to start, I created a base scene class, which would set up the important things like lighting, camera, updating, drawing, etc. And then whenever I wanted a new scene, I would simply create a new class that inherits from that initial base scene class. In this case, I would also override some functions so that the scene did what I wanted it to do. And then finally, with a scene manager, I set up a method of switching scenes when a button is pressed. Apart from that, I created an interactive camera controller. I wanted it to be very similar to the Unity editor, so that it's easy for me to show the features that I created. In this case, you can use WASD to move the camera around, and then you can use your mouse to rotate and pan the camera. Certain scenes have this camera controller, whereas other ones do just have a static camera setup. There was also a few other small features, but that's about it for the engine. Uh, so hey, it's the end of the video now. You can leave, but before you do so, uh, leave a like and subscribe. Thank you.